I'm Thomas Allen Harris. Welcome to another installment of Digital Diaspora Family Reunion. Today, we're at the AFI Silver Docks Film Festival in Silver Spring, Maryland. We've had lots of folks from the local community come by to share their family photographs with us. Let's take a look. This was Second Baptist Church in Middletown, Ohio, uh, when my father uh, was president of the Deacon Board. Reverend Roland F. Hans, H-A-N-S, who was the first um, person to get me to uh, talk in, in, uh, in front of a public crowd. I was six years old. He asked me to welcome the visitors. He, he saw a potential in me to be a great preacher someday. I thoroughly disappointed him and everybody else there in that regard. I, I wound up becoming a journalist who can't stop talking on television. So, um, but I will uh, attribute credit to him for getting me past my initial stage fright. Wow. <laughs> that picture must have been taken in the mid-50s. Fifth grade science fair. I wanted to be an engineer at first. I, I'm part of the Sputnik generation, you know. And, uh, so before Star Trek, there was Captain Video and uh, Commando Cody and all that. And so that was uh, what I originally wanted to do, but uh, math and science were not as much fun as I was hoping they would be when I got into calculus and physics, but journalism took over. I was a young reporter, opened my big mouth in a staff meeting complaining about why we, we didn't have anybody over in South Africa. And guess who was on his way to South Africa the next day? <laughs> this is Clarence Page. Award-winning journalist, and uh, I would actually like to invite him to the stage. Uh, this is South Africa, which yeah. it has, you know, unites us. I finally made it. So you made something. You made I finally made it to Joe Berg, the late great Jim Younger, next to me, a uh, seasoned foreign correspondent. He, uh, he was sort of my, my mentor on this trip, really. Uh, this is the summer of '76. The Soweto riots were about to break open. We didn't know it. It's just about to happen. But you know what I love about this picture, ladies and gentlemen? Over on the left, right? Don't you love that? That's where the story is over there. The people over there, this is apartheid South Africa before Soweto. Those folks over there on the left, who is these two dudes? <laughs> who are these two dudes? You know, the number one, we look like the police. You know, we look like the police, you know, you see white and black walking together, but even the police, white and black, didn't walk together down the street. I hope this project inspires all of you, I like inspired me to call my relatives now, you know, and uh, the young folks who are trying to do the family tree and this sort of thing, and uh, get this together, especially, you know, who took the pictures? This was a uh, self-portrait of Ernie, holding his camera at arm's length, and there's Jimmy Younger, and there's me across the aisle. Wow. In a British Airways uh, jet uh, that coming across that. Uh, yeah. That was how I found out that I was adopted. That was a good beginning because I uh, had to go back to Ohio to get my original birth certificate, and they wouldn't let me see it. And uh, they did let me see a revised birth certificate. And I said, well, why can't you let me see, see my original? And they, they said, well, this usually happens when people are adopted. And I said, oh. <laughs> I went back home. After I came back to South Africa, and I was, the next time I was back home with my parents, I confronted them about it, and they finally told me the story as to uh, how I was adopted. Um, the, uh, my mom was an unwed mom in the late 1940s. That wasn't as, people weren't as open as they are now about this. My uh, mm -hmm. late grandmother, who I got pictures of, uh, had um, said every time she saw a pregnant girl going to high school, she had a lump in her throat because of uh, how her daughter couldn't do that back then in the late 1940s. Mm -hmm. And uh, my biological mom died when, she, when I was only about two. And uh, so oh, she, we she had, uh, away. yes, uh, oh. she, she passed away when I was about two. Wow. And um, yeah, she was a beautiful woman. And I uh, was, uh, well, uh, everybody tells the story about how even though I was living in Ohio and my biological mom's family was in Michigan and we visited them a lot and I bonded with her so much that when I was there uh, after she had passed, uh, at one point uh, around dinner time or whatever, uh, I went missing and they know where I was and they found me in her room just kind of staring at the wall because uh, I apparently missed her so that I, was, I was not quite two years old yet. So it's like uh, there was, a, so I, I just vaguely, remember her. My, my biological mother and her 
uh, family mm -hmm. uh, were friends of ours mm -hmm. growing up, mm -hmm. but I didn't mm -hmm. know that they were actually blood relatives until I until I was assigned to go to South Africa by the Chicago Tribune. My mother always wanted a girl, so before I had my first haircut, she borrowed a dress from the girl next door and uh, put some ribbons in my hair, tied some pigtails in there, and took pictures. And it took me years to forgive her for this. <laughs> I said, you give me complex, now you give me an identity crisis here, you know? But now I can, I, I can look back with fondness and laugh and say, say, dear mom, especially now that I'm the father of a son, mm -hmm. I know why she wanted a little girl. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> he's a good kid. He's, he's, he's just like me, though. I call him grandma's revenge. That's what it is. But anyway.